Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Vance here. And welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Now today, we're taking a look at the uh, Constellation Aquila. Now forgive me if I first pronounced that wrong. Good possibility. Um, this is the Exploration uh, Constellation version. Now a lot of people have actually been asking across all my videos, can I use this to do ship to do exploration? Can I use this to do exploration? So on and so on. Now there is one reason why there is a preferable ship for exploration, and it's the one that is obviously branded with it, is because it comes with some key features. So we'll go through them in a minute. First of all, let's just talk about the sort of the basic stats. Now it comes with um, 1,100 uh, freight units, which is not bad. Uh, it's the same as the Andromeda, and half well, half the half of what the Phoenix is. So not bad. Obviously, there's no way as uh, as big as the um, the hauler, which is uh, nearly 2,000 freight units, 1,900 freight units, obviously. But you know, 1,100 is still a fair amount, even if you just wanted to use this for doing haulage. So definitely ticks that box there. No, no doubt about it. Now, looking through the stats compared to the other ships, you know, minus the obviously the Phoenix, pretty much on par. I'd say pretty much they are four person, uh, max power plant six. Pretty everything's pretty much the same. The only thing that was actually different with this one is probably going to be on the weaponry. Um, the weaponry's it, it, it's, it's got the same sort of weaponry as the hauler, so it's not really geared for necessarily fighting, but don't get me wrong, it can still defend itself quite capably, there's no doubt about that. It comes with um, the Class 2 S4's uh, Size 3 laser, lasers, which is pretty much going right across the constellation, apart from obviously the Phoenix, which has got the, the bigger lasers. Um, and then it's got two missile racks, uh, which is sort of okay. I would, you would have liked a few, a few more, if you, to, to be fair. But, you know, just got to make the best of it, I suppose. And it comes with also, it comes with one class five. Now, don't get me wrong, it is sort of outmatched compared to the sort of um, the Andromeda, which is more like the multi roll ship and obviously the Phoenix. But this is what you're buying into. And now I know this is going off, it's not really going off track, actually. I mean, I used to love watching Star Trek, guys, um, and, and the reason I got into this game is because, you know, I watched all the Star Trek as a kid and grew up, and I just, I just loved the fact that flying out in space and exploring and landing on planets, and, you know, Star Citizen's been my dream come true, really, you know, and that's why I got a, I bought into the sort of constellation myself, to, to have that role. Now, with all fairness, the Enterprise was never really geared for mega weaponry. I would say that this is probably more likely the Enterprise, more nearer to it than probably the Phoenix and the other ships. Is that sort of makes sense? So you see what I mean? So it's not just all about weaponry. Look, if you come under fire by a Hornet, you're going to better take him out. There's no doubt about it. You know what I mean? If you come under maybe two or three, then it might get a bit, a little bit tougher. Um, but look, you've got to look what, why you've got the ship and what role you want to play. And if you're doing the exploration, this is obviously the better ship, um, and we'll go into a little bit more why in a minute. Okay, so what's it actually come with this package? Um, it comes with, um, you obviously get the jump drive, all the constellations come with uh, jump drives. You do get the um, rover uh, and uh, a fight with this one. And also you get a few other little things as well, which you've sort of got to dig down into the details because it actually doesn't fit, fit it all in on the stats page. I might have spotted a mistake here, but I'll let you know in a minute. Um, looking on the actual secondary stat page, obviously you get the uh, you get the rover. You obviously well, these are a couple other things you get as well. And I don't know if you're getting double of this or one or is it a mistake or not. Um, you get the expandable fuel tanks, like I just said. You also get um, long range scanners. Now this is pretty key. I mean, if you do an exploration, I think in some ways if you've got them long range scanners. You've got them for two reasons. First of all, to scan for planets, derelict ships, uh, mining areas, all sorts of things that you can actually uh, scan for. So that's the that's the first point. We've got two types of scanner here. I'm sort of just going to jump over and I'll come back to the, the whole mythology around scanners. The, the next um, type of scanner you've got is you've got jump point navigational sensors, which is a sort of a it is a sort of scanner, scanner uh, sensor as well. Now, the, the reason you've got the two, you've got the sort of exploration and, and sensor capability. So you've got the sensors to uh, pick up maybe an energy signature from long, long range. 
and you've also got the ability to pick up a, a jump point might be nearby. Now, the reason you would want to find a jump port is because the way that Star Citizen um, is set up, I mean, someone asked me today saying, oh, they were concerned about playing Star Citizen and in the first month, the whole universe has been, you know, saturated. It's not going to be like that because we don't have warp, you know, we, we use the jump ports and when everyone starts, we're not going to know where them jump ports are. There, there might be a few around, but the idea is, is a part of the exploration process is actually to go and map the jump ports. So here we are, guys. This is the ship. Um, this is the one that is actually going to be better for picking up where the jump points are, you know, flying into deep space. Um, I mean, between jump ports, you could be flying a week. I mean, so you, you could find a jump point there. You could find a derelict ship. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. Going back to where we started, when we spoke about the actual weaponry loadout. Now, you've got to see it this way. If there is another constellation flying out there and it's a phoenix, right and you're in your exploring constellation you are gonna more you are well, not more likely you are going to pick him up on the sensors first you know you've got long-range sensors it makes logical sense you're gonna pick up his energy signature before he picks you up so do you need them weapons if you're doing exploration you avoid that attack you move away you make sure you you know, you don't fly into his path. Because if you're doing exploration, why would you want to engage another ship and possibly die? You don't. The whole point is, is to explore, find the jump ports. Maybe, I mean, you could go into deep space and find a Bangle carrier. We know they could, we know that you can find them. And once again, uh, Constellation is going to be a, a fantastic selection for that. Now, secondary to that, to, to sort of complement the ship, you have the fuel tanks as well. So... That is why, if you really want to go into the exploration part of the game, I mean, there's nothing saying that you can jump in a smaller ship, you know, a 300, 325, whatever you want, an Avenger. There's nothing still stopping you finding a jump port. There's still nothing stopping you finding a Bangle carrier or something floating in space, an alien ship or something. You can still do that. There's no doubt about it. But the reality is, is if you've got key features on your ship like you know long range scanners jump port scanners you know the chances you are finding them if you're exploring is going to be a lot higher you're going to be able to carry more you're going to be able to um, scan more parts of space from a wider field as you're moving forward so that's some of the reasons why bespoke exploration sh ships are going to have an advantage in that area but maybe not a necessarily advantage on the fighting aspect of it but that's the role the ship does. So, let's go and take a look around. Now, actually, this is the first constellation out of all three. And this, uh, got, we've got them all here. We're going to be jumpy today, guys. I don't know why it's jumping, but... Okay, so this is the um, first one we've got. If you have a look... Actually, it's, actually, you can see that way. It's probably better. If you look at the front of the Phoenix there, now all three, apart bar the Aquila, has... The same. So it has the same front end. Can you see the sort of pointy front end? Uh, I'm just going to turn this way. A bit jumpy, guys. A bit motion blurs on as well. It's awful. You can see the sort of pointy nose down the end there. We've got some bugs at the moment, guys, with my graphics card with this uh, hanger. So you have to forgive me. Um, so you can see that, you know, the, the the first three constellations have this sort of pointy nose. And this one has a rounded one. So the actually, this has got a structural difference at the front. Now, the reason is, is because obviously because of its roll title, Exploration, they've given it a sort of a slightly better viewing angle. So it's more of a spectator's de deck, really, than a, you know, just flying forward. Because if you're exploring space, you want to have good viewing angles, not necessarily because you're going to be fighting other ships, but because you want to see things. It's, you know, quite simple, really. Okay, so look, moving on to the front. Sky TV, guys. You, you, get, you get Sky. No, I'm joking. I'm guessing that is either one or the other. That's probably going to be the jump port um, scanner, guys. And if you look, if I just run over it, turn around, top there. You can see, you can't quite see, it's quite dark. See the little probes? Oh, there we are, it's better view. It's a probe sitting out there. That's probably going to be your scanners. You've got them on both sides. Now, see you've actually got them on both sides. Now, this is quite interesting, guys. This is what I noticed I was going to come back to earlier. I don't, it's clearly not a fault on the site then. Because apparently, 
This is I've this is the first ship I've seen with this guys because the 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 freelancer Dur did not have this unless they changed the stats. So I would have to go back and check. Now I'm just going to check now. Jump point one. Okay. I stand corrected. They are the jump point scanners because it actually says on the website it has two. It's actually got two individual slots under AE, which is an additional equipment, uh, which are jump point scanners. So it actually has two of them. I don't know if that makes any difference, but two's all good. So that then tells me the only thing what's left is that and then obviously has to be the long range scanner. So I don't know if it's going to make it twice as better as any other ship to find uh, jump ports, but I have to go back and check the stats because uh, the last time I looked, the Freelancer Dur only had one. Uh, maybe because that's something to do with field of view because of the size of the ship. Who knows? But uh, a bit of an observation there. Now, lots of red lights on the front there. I don't really know what they do. Let's have a look. Uh, I know they obviously lights. Okay. You would have thought, actually, for an exploration ship, it might have had some massive spotlights or something. Do you know what I mean? So, like, big halogens or something, you know, to light up things when it finds it in space. Fortunately, guys, we're in this sort of dark hangar. It's a bit dark in here. Um, moving around, you can see the side there. Slightly better viewing angle. You can see it's got a slightly different angle to the other ones, where the other ones are sort of more like a point, if you know what I'm saying. These ones are actually, you've got a bit more of a viewing angle sort of vertically, if it's fair to say. Uh, but we'll go and have a look inside. We'll have a walk around. Now, one of the things I, I haven't actually seen yet on the ship, uh, and I'm pretty certain it's not here because I can't see it, unlike the when we look at the um, the Freelancer series, the tanks are not on the ship. I cannot see the tanks. Extended fuel tanks. Unless it's it can take extended fuel tanks and they're not on, which I wouldn't have thought they would have done that because it's actually in the description. If you're buying something with extended fuel tanks, uh, you sort of expect to get it, didn't you? Uh, but I can't obviously see them here. Don't really know where they're going to bolt on, but it's not obvious. Maybe, it, I mean, it could go underneath here or something. Not quite sure. Have to wait and see. I logo on the side. Moving around the back here. Run of the mill engines on the rear there. It's got the snug fighter in the back there as well. Bit dark, guys, so we can't really see much. Let's go and have a look at the cargo bay. Keeping in mind, obviously, you, if you're doing exploration, one of the things that's quite interesting, we saw the um, Constellation uh, video when they landed on a planet. I'll be first to say that I was, I was, I was a, I'm not so a little bit disappointed. I'm hoping they did say that we can't kill them aliens. I'm not saying that I want to go and kill aliens, but I want to land on a planet, guys, personally, and I want to be under threat because a part of exploration, like in Star Trek, <laughs> refer back to that again, when you do land on a planet, there could be a risk there. You could, they, you know, they might be never seen a spaceship before. They might try and club you to death. Um, so I sort of want that personally i mean i'm not sure how it's going to pan out we'll have to wait and see when you land on the planet obviously you're going to have the rover so there's going to be things on planet side that you can actually find this has got 1100 now the advantage i suppose with this and going back to my other videos you're going to probably better fit the rover and cargo in here if you know what i'm saying uh, so you're going to get probably a lot more in here that would be interesting to see how that pans out. We've had a good look around this one before anyway. You can see they've got all these oil splats. don't know if I'm keen on it. I don't mind the oil splats. I just don't like the repetitiveness of it. Uh, because it's just everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's on there. Like, you can see it everywhere. Maybe they want to go for a different texture, some sort of different sort of worn, used texture in different places because, I don't know, my, it's just personal preference. It's only a little thing, guys. Let's move inside and have a look at this. Uh, shut the doors up, shall we? And we're heading inside and we're going to take a look at the cockpit area. Lots of red lights. Very difficult to really see. I wonder what that is there. Is that something? No, I'm just having a look to see where maybe them fuel tanks could bolt onto. It's not obvious, is it? No, not obvious, is it? Maybe it's something that has not been confirmed yet. Oh, look, guys. Oh, look at that, look. See that there? Look, see? Oh, right. That's pretty cool, guys. See, the arm extends out. So you're going to have some sort of scanning mode, guys. Look. You can see that that arm extends out there, and there's one of them little satellite dishes on there. 
So this must be something to a part of the exploration, and uh, that exactly explains why you get less missile racks then, because one of the missile racks is use uh, utilized for exploration. That is why, because look on there you've got you've got both on there. You've got the jump port scanner and the deep space scanner. Ah, oh, it's really cool, guys. That's going to be really cool. So what you're going to have to do is activate your deep spanning, uh, scanning device and the arms are going to attract. Oh, I like that, guys. Really cool. Nice little spot there. I'm assuming this is going to... I'm sure. I'm assuming it's on this side as well. Didn't notice that the first time. I didn't, didn't expect that to have that like that. So let's just go and just check that and see if it's got on this side. Uh, can we see it? Uh... Yep, it's there as well. Can't really see much in there. Come on, I'm trying to have a bit of a peek. Like that, guys. Really cool. Very cool. So it might have to be going slowish to deploy it, maybe. I'm not sure what speed you can deploy them racks. If you can be going full speed, does it cause any drag? I know there's no drag in space, but... You know, you get the idea. I wonder if when would, do you have to go into some sort of scanning mode or something? You can only fly at a set speed, or that'd be interesting. I like that, guys. Really cool. Uh, adds a really good feature to it as well. Brilliant. So let's let's go inside and have a look. Once again, you can see on the rams. I've never looked at these rams when you go up. Oh, you can't. That's probably why I haven't looked at them. <laughs> So the obviously the, the first part is obviously the cockpit area. I, I, I'm 50/50 here, guys. You know, I'm I, I was in the hangar for about 10-15 minutes, running between the two ships, and then sort of standing in one spot, looking, and then run back to the other ship and stand in the same spot to try and determine if if this cockpit actually adds any value to the physical view range. I'm I'm not sure. I think if your chair was here, maybe. See what I mean? If you were here, then yeah, but, but the fact that you're actually here, you do have this sort of blind... I don't think you sit in this seat. I think we can. But when you're actually in this seat, look. It's not bad, I guess. You definitely have more glass, there's no doubt about that, but... And it's wider, but... I don't know, I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments. Do you think, do you think this is bigger? If you go and look at my, one of my other videos, is this a bigger cockpit? It is definitely bigger. Has it got the better... Um, viewing angles and the viewing capability because that's you know that's the whole purpose of having this front cockpit obviously things are slightly laid out a little bit differently but we've got pretty much the same core functionality well one of the things it hasn't got guys a little observation here it hasn't got the front screen is it you notice it hasn't got the uh, glass panel screen that all the other ones have um, I don't know if you remember, the Phoenix had the blue and the other two had the black ones. And what it is, guys, if you haven't seen my previous video, maybe go and have a look. You get a glass screen. It runs from about here all the way over here. And then basically, I'm assuming that's going to be some sort of, um, you know, some sort of HUD that sort of, and the glass lights up and it's going to have all your navigational stuff on it. So where do you get it here then? Where does it go in then? Can't see where you're... Maybe that's all you get. I suppose what you could do, guys, you could get out your chair and go, hmm, never look around like that, couldn't you? You do have that ability and that sort of view where the other ships is a bit difficult. You actually can't get in this position with the other ships because you've got that glass thing. This is as far as you can get. Or the seat would move forward. That would be, that'd be really cool, guys. If that seat would move forward, maybe to about here, if it was sat here, really cool. Fantastic. If you can move forward, they should put it on runners. Why don't they put the seat on runners? Why is the captain sitting so far back? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe... Oh, let me know in the comments, guys. Does that move forward? Maybe it doesn't. Why would the captain be sitting so far back? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. No, it doesn't look like it moves, is it? It looks like it's bold in the ceiling, doesn't it? Let's get around this side. Yeah, definitely bolted in there, isn't it? Shame it wouldn't move forward because you you have some fantastic viewing angles if you can get up the front there. So pretty pretty good in for the co-pilot. The co-pilot's got this stupid thing in the way though. Look, I mean he's right next to him, just where he wants to look. So he's got a real bad blind spot there. All he can see out is that his little window there and this half. The guy on the other side, if he can he see, he can't see that way neither. It's 
suppose he can. You have to look over there behind him. I don't know. I'm not 100% convinced, guys. I'm have to, I know this is uh, early stages. Maybe they do a bit of a rejig. I mean, it might be just a case of moving the seats a little bit, you know? There's nothing stopping them moving that seat forward there. The main reason they've probably done it is because already it's a bit tight getting through the gap. But anyway. Anyway, enough about the front anyway. Let me know in the comments and see what you think, guys. But I think that could be a little bit better. Maybe if that seat went forward. You know, let me, let me know what you think. Okay, we've got the standard guns, guys. One up, one down. I'm not going to get in there because uh, there's a few little technical issues at the moment. Um, one of them when you get in the seat and you can't get back out. I just don't want to risk it at the moment while I'm doing the video. Going right in here, really. Can't see anything majorly different, anyone just think, like structurally, anyway. Had a good look round. Same panels. The only difference being is, is the Phoenix has got... The only, the only ship that's actually got different interior, not just because of the, you know, the rear leather and all the stuff it's got on the you know, hot tub. Uh, not because of that. It's more to do with the tablets. It's the way that the information is displayed. It's slightly different. And the Phoenix has got a full screen display here as well. Who knows what it does. We'll have to wait and see. Once again, you can see that sort of splattered effect. Sort of don't mind it. I think it's overused a little bit. So anyway, I haven't seen that before. What's that there? Is that, is that a floor light? Oh, it looks like a light there. Look, I've never seen that before. Looks like a light, doesn't it? Oh, it's actually on. It's actually on, look. That's a bit weird, isn't it, guys? Didn't look like it was on. I can see the light there, but obviously a bit of a bug there. Because the light's coming out, but the light's not on. If that makes any sense. And we've got the same thing over here. A bit weird. Anyway, probably a little bug. Got the table area. I think this one actually works, and all the other ones it didn't. Get the idea, comes down. Plates, cups, all your usual stuff there. Actually got another little table around here, some water around here. We've got some cups there. Definitely gonna be one of you're definitely gonna be wanting to uh, wash them. They look very clean. You might struggle to drink out of them cups. It looks they do appear to have I don't know, either actually they could be upside down, maybe. Look a bit dirty. Need washing anyway. Pretty good. I could uh I'm not going to risk putting it away, guys. So I'll probably end up going down the blooming uh, debris when I down the old shaft. Toilet. Hand basin. Funny looking light. I think we can actually sit on the loo as well on this one. It's very. Does it need to be that dirty? I don't know. I know this is not. It's not OCD, here, guys. This is just observations here. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm done. I'm a quick poor. Looks good. No toilet roll though, guys. Actually, that's a good point, actually. Where's the toilet roll rack? And, yeah, interesting. Never thought of that. Don't know if you can flush the loo later on. Mirror, mirror effect is actually in the game now, but they're just not very good. And there's obviously going to be a mirror up there. Let's go and have a look at the shower. My favourite room. This is this is the uh, hideout, guys, where you hide when you're being boarded. Just mind the plug socket in down the bottom there. These, I, I think they, I said there were fans last time. I'm not really sure what these are. Maybe they are. It, it does look like one of them showers you get in. I've seen them things at the uh, theme parks, guys. You know, when you go down the road um, rides and you get all wet. And you can go and stand in one of these booths with all the fans and it just, this dries you out. Maybe that's what it is. Like, you have a shower and all of a sudden... Is there a switch here? There's a button somewhere, maybe. And all of a sudden, the fans come on, they dry you. And is there some sort of ventilation there? Maybe some are, are blow out and some are draw in, maybe. Maybe that's the case. Anyway, that's enough time talking about the shower. Uh, moving on. We've obviously got the beds. With the uh, wet-yourself blanket. I'm not keen on that. Almost looks fluid, doesn't it? Let me actually open these top ones. Oh, we can. Oh god, seat nearly killed me. Bloody uh, chair nearly killed me. Chair? Ladder. Pretty cool. Really cool animation there. Like that. Same this one up as well as I've done them all now. Very nice. Moving into the uh, cargo. I actually opened the door earlier. I can actually close it. This one does actually close. Let's say there. Keep out. It looks like a keep out electricity. I love these little signs. I know if you've been watching all my videos, guys, I always look at the signs. 
I love these little things they put in everywhere, these little stickers. It looks like keep out, doesn't it? It says, I know it says keep out, but it looks like electricity. What, what, what you can electrocute yourself? God knows. Okay, moving around here. I don't know if we've got arrows on the floor there. Apparently you can only go one way here, guys, because there's arrows, so you can't come back. Oh, no, you can. It's all leading to here. Exit. It's the hatch, obviously. He sent the hatch to cargo bay. Can't go up the ladders yet, guys, because we know that animation's not in there yet. Now, these uh, compartments here, I'm making, I've always made the assumption that these are going to be for the four crew members, that you're going to be able to put your clothes, your weapons, and all your board, you know, your planetary sort of stuff in here. With a tablet there as well. Moving into the back. Obviously, that's going to be to uh, get out into the... Uh, into your secondary ship. Looks nice. Let's head back down to the front. Oh, just noticed that as well. I can't remember actually. Did the other ones have windows there? Maybe they did. To check. Hop back in here. Let's have a look. See what else we got. I mean, that's that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, when you go for the the exploration part of it, I mean. Yeah, don't get me wrong, viewing is important, but I think it's, this ship really, if you want to do the exploration, if you want that Star Trek adventure, then this is the ship for you. Don't get me wrong, the Freelancer as well, um, you know, the Freelancer Doe is just as good, and it's a little bit cheaper, obviously less crew, but it still has the same capabilities. The only thing we don't know yet, which I'm definitely going to do after I finish this video, is go and have a look into... Here we go again, guys. Is two better than one? <laughs> is two sensors better than one? Well, actually, the funny thing about that, actually, guys, there's a bit of a contradiction, actually, isn't it? Because we've I've, I've just identified there's one there, right? There's one there, and there's two on the uh, extendable arms. So there's four. And may, maybe one big one, one small one equals one. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see, guys. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.